The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Nikki Spagnola. And here we are. Yes, finally. It's a Victory Monday edition of Mix Shots. And I am Bill Jones. He is Everson Walls. And he is Mickey Spagnola. And Everson, who did you pick to win the game on Sunday? Oh, Bill, don't do me like that, man. You know how it goes. Anytime the Cowboys win, I'm going to take credit for it. You know, I woke up. Early this morning, no hangover. I felt good. I didn't have to drink myself to sleep last night. You know, it seems like everything involved with the cowboy world was good. Jason Whitten called a touchdown yesterday. <laughs> I'm taking credit for that. Des well, Bryant I, caught a Des Bryant caught some passes. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> I mean, look at the, 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 the NFC East. I think three of the four teams actually are on a one-game winning streak. In the <laughs> NFC East. So, come on, man. Everything is right with the world. CeeDee Lamb, best catch of the year, bar none. So, I love it, man. I love it. And uh, so, Everson picked the Cowboys to win. I picked the Cowboys to win. And Mickey Spagnola, what did you do on Friday? I was precluded from <laughs> picking them to win because I said I wouldn't pick them to win until they won two straight. So I guess I got to pick them to lose on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Have you noticed, though, when I start picking them to lose, their play has picked up week by week by week? That's right. Yes, it has. That's right. So I, I think, think we have a request. We've discovered the key here. <laughs> <laughs> the defense is offended by your your gall. The yeah. fact that you have the gall to pick against they, us. They 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 were they were so offended they gave up 430 yards and 28 points. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you, Spags? It's all about situations. Right. When it came down to it, the last drive, the Cowboys were batting a thousand. Kirk Cousins didn't know what hit him. We finally came to play that last drive of the game. Defense, was, they had already settled in finally with two minutes left to go in the game. Actually, it was the last two drives because <laughs> the time, the drive before, they got the ball back for the offense with four minutes to yeah. go uh, to drive down for what turned out to be the winning touchdown. And then with a minute 37 left, I believe it was, they actually closed the game for a change, which is something they haven't been doing uh, so far this year or, by the way, not many times last year either, but they ended up <laughs> getting a four That's and true. Out. That's true. So, yeah. You but when we win, it is such, it is such a good – it's like the, 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 the sun is shining brighter. All of a sudden, nationally, we're, we're, we're back on the national stage in a positive level, on a positive level. Uh, we got a chance to play for first place in less than four days. Come on, man. Life is good. Life and you know, is the, good. Best, the best news of all, we're on that national stage, and we get Joe Buck and Troy Aikman calling the game on, thir- Thank- on this Thursday and the following Thursday, too. I, that's what I was saying throughout the game. That no matter how it turned out, at least we're getting Buck and Aikman the next two games. <laughs> we didn't, they didn't even manage to get DJ in that game. <laughs> he got he got promoted. Yes, I know. You're talking about Moose? Yeah. yeah, he got promoted. So yeah, so couldn't even which, get the number so two we, squad. That, uh, yeah, there, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. No, we're but back, he's so we're gonna see him. We're back. That's all we needed was one that's right. win. That's right. <laughs> So here we are on a Victory Monday, and there's so much to talk about. We need more than 45 minutes. Uh, Mickey, where would you like to start? You already kind of started on the defensive side of the uh, football, but, you know, the other thing that is uh, remarkable is how much different things play out strategically when you actually get a lead in the first half of a game. Or have a seasoned veteran playing quarterback for you that you actually – protected uh, at a decent rate uh, for a change. I I thought that they were able to open up the playbook, uh, be much more uh, multiple uh, 
uh, on offense. Uh, the offensive line uh, performed probably the best it's performed in, in weeks. Um, and everybody's going to say, well, yeah, it was the move. They finally moved Zach Martin to right tackle. Well, they moved Zach Martin to right tackle when they felt comfortable with Connor McGovern playing right guard. Uh, and that was the key to that, uh, listening to Stephen Jones this morning on his radio segment when they asked him about the move. His first response was, yeah, Connor McGovern has been getting better and better and better and felt like he can handle right guard, so that allowed them to kick uh, Martin out to right tackle. Uh, I, I think that was key. Uh, and, and as an offensive line, they, they played much better, I think. Um, what was uh, Dalton was sacked just uh, twice, uh, twice once. in the game, or once in the game, yeah, and and that was his fault because he hung on to the ball uh, far too long. Uh, but other than that, uh, the protection is good, and it's like, oh, Zeke woke up, yeah, Zeke woke up. <laughs> the the offensive line blocked better. Uh, they they all of a sudden the uh, opposing team had to worry about the run. They ran for 180 yards. You know, that kind of got lost yes. in the shuffle. They ran on the team that runs. Uh, so I, I, I just they thought... They outrushed them. 180 to, I think it was 140, 125. Uh, so I, I, and I thought Mike McCarthy and, and, and C.D. Lamb hit the nail on the head. McCarthy kept talking about how, what a team win it was. And C.D. Yes. Lamb said the game of football is complementary play. And he meant offense, defense, special teams. When the, when the offense scores, defense has got to pick up, or when they don't score. And how about this? They got takeaways and actually scored after both a touchdown and a field goal, which is something they hadn't That's been doing kept previously, them in the game. right? Yeah. And, and, and that touchdown yep. on, after the first fumble recovery, it was a 30-yard drive. It was the shortest drive all season long for a touchdown. Prior to that, they had no drives less than 65 yards for a touchdown. So they complemented each other. And then you get a great play like you got from C.D. Lamb. And like I said, you got professional quarterback play finally. Uh, at the quarterback position since Dak went out. And all of a sudden you look up and you go, oh, got a win. Scored 31 points. Mm. How about that? The most points they scored since, the what, the Giants game? Uh, and actually the most touchdowns they've scored since they, they matched it, the Giants game. And the, the, they scored more touchdowns in one game than they had totaled in the last three. Wow. And, you know, when you look at that game, guys, what I liked about it was, yes, the defense, they played loosely, so to speak, but there were no quick points. There were no quick drives. Quick, a, a quick scoring opportunity, and when it's taken advantage of by the offense, that kind of demoralizes your defense. And I like the way we hung in there on every drive. Yes, we gave up some rushing yards. And, oh, my goodness, was I the smartest person in the world last week when I said Kirk Cousins was going to have a horrible game? This guy comes out, was he 20 for 25? He was killing it. <laughs> Three touchdowns. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And yet, even with that, we were still able to defensively, how can I put it? We didn't just lay down. There are, there's something to be said of resistance. I enjoyed watching uh, the defiance by our defense on the goal line. Yes, they scored, but it took them a minute. And boy, you talking about somebody bringing their hat with them. Do is it Donovan Wilson? I always get this guy's name messed up. You got it. Donovan Wilson was bringing his hat to work on Sunday. I love that physicality because, yes, uh, uh, Cook was still getting his yards, but we were very active defensively. And anything that Minnesota uh, was able to accomplish in that game, they had to earn it. And to me, I can take that for a defense. I know we're not necessarily that talented on defense, especially in our secondary. But those guys fought tooth and nail with just a couple of technique issues in our secondary. This is something that just has always bothered me with our secondary. Tom Landry had the flex defense, which I hated because it, it is not a defensive back's friend. 
But the best tip you could give for the flex defense, because it plays against the run, and they're getting you ready for the play-action pass. That's what the flex defense is all about. It gets you ready for the play-action. The cornerbacks in a play-action pass must be deep and inside shoulder coverage. We have never talked about this, guys. That's why our defensive backs in the, in the 80s would give up sidelines because it was by design. If you give up a sideline, you can live to play another day. If you give up the inside of the field, you can go all the way for a touchdown with any slant or inside route. For some reason, technically speaking, we do not have our defensive backs play inside. You must play inside on a blitz and especially on a play action pass. That's where you're going to get hurt. And you've seen it all year long. I don't know why no one makes the adjustment. You get a yard inside if you have to, but just make sure that this guy doesn't run all the way across the field where no one is there to help you. But even with all of that, we hung in there. Of course, we were going to give up some plays, but we hung in there just long enough to allow the offense to control the ball game with Zeke Elliott and Pollard. Great win. Te textbook win for me. It was all facets of the game. Uh, you know, there for a little bit, they, uh, they were long drives uh, that the Vikings put together to start the third quarter. In fact, three in a row, three touchdown drives. But they seemed to be getting quicker as we went along. And I was like, okay, uh, we're reverting back here to what we've seen too much in the past. And then finally they got the stop, which gave the offense a chance. But, I mean, you look at the third quarter and uh, the Cowboys, how many plays did the Cowboys run in the third quarter? Like six plays to 20 yeah, not for, uh, for the Vikings. Yeah, you got to be a little and, deja vu uh, in that third quarter. You know, and they had the quick uh, – the the what I a seventy five yard five play drive that resulted in the Justin Jefferson touchdown after the Tony Pollard uh, touchdown run that gave the Cowboys the lead. So back and forth we go in the fourth quarter, and uh, and then it came down to crunch time in the final four minutes. Offense came through, defense came through, and uh, we walk away uh, sitting here on a Monday, uh, a half game out of first place in a division that has four teams with three wins, <laughs> ten games into the season. Not for long, baby. And playing, four, four wins coming up. And playing four for wins first place up. on Thanksgiving Day against them Redskins. Who, by the oh, way, against that football team. Washington. Oh, Washington. Washington's, the Washingtons. The <laughs> Washingtons. I did. I did look it up. They've played. They've played uh, the Washington football team nine times on Thanksgiving and won eight of them. Mm. Mm. And, and the I most remember, notable I remember was the, the the Drew Pearson. God, what was the quarterback's name? I'm getting old, Clint Bill. Longley. Come on, man. Clint Longley. Clint Longley. <laughs> Clint Longley. Come on. To Drew Pearson. That was one of the best type Thanksgivings ever. <laughs> <laughs> So here we go with another one. You know, right. funny. Uh, I've oh, got a couple minutes here. Funny, funny story about that. Go game. ahead, Mickey. Funny story about that game. Uh, so it was the night before the Cowboys played Washington. It might have been a Sunday night game or a Monday night game, and uh, was was having an after dinner drink in Georgetown, and uh, some guy started talking with us. Found out what we did, and uh, he said, "Yeah." He goes, "That that that that." Clint Longley guy, he spoiled my Thanksgiving. <laughs> he goes, I got sick to my stomach, and I didn't even eat Thanksgiving meal because of that guy. And he goes, and I'm still mad at him. <laughs> this has got to be 30 years later, right? <laughs> the guy was still upset about Clint Longley's replacing Staubach after he suffered the concussion and came to uh, – what was it? The uh, I'm, I'm victory sure, of sure, uh, victory sure of the years. uncluttered mind, or something like the that. The uncluttered mind. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The I'm, triumph. I'm it was triumph. Wayne Nye described it. Yeah. Triumph of the uncluttered mind. Yeah. It, it's been thirty years, and and Roger and Clint probably still don't like each other either. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? It's been Everson. It's been forty six years. <laughs> <laughs> 40, I'm sorry. 46 years. <laughs> I keep forgetting how old I am, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we're here to remind each other how old we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I only own mix shots. <laughs> yep, that's right. Okay, there's so much to get to, and we only have about a minute or so left in this uh, first segment. All right, let's line up. What, what all do we want to get to over the next half hour? We're not getting to it yet. But, Mickey, what do we want to get to over the next half hour on mix shots? I think C.D. We, Lamb is at the top of the list for me. Right, and then uh, Andy Dalton uh, has to be okay. next. I, I think uh, right. th- their ability to run the football with Zeke and Pollard. Uh, and uh, I think we got to pay some respects to Leighton Vanderish and see how much Yay. more physical Pick the click, baby. that defense Pick plays the with him on the field. It's amazing. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, you, could, you had all three linebackers, right? Everson, you did. Yeah, but I, I, I clearly court. I have my notes here, sir. Clearly, <laughs> I had I had Layton uh, highlighted. Well, he Thank he you was very much. number one on the list. All right, okay. That's we right. continue with more mix shots. So much to get to, and we come back. Hey there, Cowboys fans! With Tide Cleaners at home pickup and delivery, cleaning your clothes has never been more convenient. Simply sign up at your local store, set out your dirty clothes, and one of our Tide Cleaners professionals will come directly to your home for a totally contactless experience. Your clean garments will be returned promptly the next scheduled delivery day, so skip the errand and enjoy life, not laundry. Visit TideCleaners.com or your local store to sign up for Tide Cleaners at home pickup and delivery today. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Grab some OtterBox gear and get ready for hanging with the boys. From rugged venture coolers to tough as nails elevation tumblers, We've got what you need to keep your game day drinks frosty and your football feast ice cold. And with cases, screen protectors, and power accessories, you can defend your phone and stay connected to every play. Gear up at OtterBox.com and amp up the fun of every Cowboys game. That's OtterBox.com. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of mine. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Back, back, back. to mixed shots. Cowboys will be back home at AT AT&T Stadium on Thursday to take on the Washington football team. Tickets starting at $89 on sale now. Get yours today at dallascowboys.com slash tickets. Yes, the football team comes in here after winning over Cincinnati on uh, Sunday to improve to 3-7 themselves. And uh, they knocked Joe Burrow, a number one overall pick, out for the season now with a torn ACL. That was a brutal hit to see. Uh, you know, it's, it's every week uh, you, you're, you're seeing players go down all across uh, the league, and uh, it, it really shows you what a survival of the fittest game this is and what a marathon it is really uh, as well. Uh, you know, and, and people will rag on the NFC East and how brutal a division it's been, uh, you know, through the first ten games of the season. But it is what it is, and it's there for the taking. The last six games now, and so uh, I like the fact that uh, we're sitting here with uh, with with some tangible games, meaningful games to play. Uh, And a couple of them here in the span of a a week's time from Thursday to Thursday against Washington and Baltimore where we're going to figure out a lot more about this football team and how it is currently constituted because it's obviously this Cowboys team is a different team than what it was two months ago. You know, Bill, you're you're exactly right. When you get Andy Dalton back on the field, uh, you get an offensive line that 
maybe, I don't want to jinx them, but might start the same five guys <laughs> two weeks in a row if all goes well between now and, and Thursday. You're, you're seeing a little bit better play there. Uh, you get the running game going. It gets the passing game going. Uh, it's just, as, as C.D. Lamb said, complimentary football. Uh, and 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 the defense, as Everson said, they may have given up the point, given up the points, given up the yards, but they made plays, and that's what this game of football is about. You've got to make plays, so and they true. made some plays for yeah. a change, and and made life tough. Uh, on, on a Vikings team that had won three consecutive games, which, by the way, goes back to my my theory. Right, the more the cl- more you lose in a row, the closer you are to winning, and the more you win in a row, the closer you are to losing. <laughs> That's why it's tough for me to see Pittsburgh at at ten and zero. Yeah, I'm waiting on them to lose because I mean they had a chance to lose here uh, in Dallas, and you know one other thing about this win, guys. I didn't even really realize it until I was sitting there because the, the field, you know, it looked good. It looked like our field in, 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 in Arlington. We played as if we were at home, you know, and I get it. There's, the crowd is different now because of the pandemic and all of that. But, you know, there's still a familiarity with whatever stadium you go into. And the Cowboys played very comfortably. Uh, you never saw them in a panic situation. Even though the defense was giving up some plays, they made some. Two turnovers made a difference in this ball game. And when we talk about all the things that we may have done wrong, Spags, uh, during the break you talked about not having a linebacker, the three linebackers in the game. You've got the defensive end trying to guard one or two uh, very accomplished tight ends and, and who were having a great game at that time. We did so many things, I think, to beat ourselves but yet we would not allow ourselves to do it because the, the pace of the game was ours to control. And we came out doing that on the, the, the initial drive and with, that, with a stall in the third quarter, we continued that train of thought defensively and offensively. And Bill, you know, I was, I was, I was right. mentioning having Andy Dalton back on the field and by no means was he perfect. Uh, he had a couple throws that I'm sure he wanted back. Man. Uh, the interception. Yeah. You know, if he just leads the guy, uh, you know, he's got a big yeah. play. He had another play to Dalton Schultz that uh, he was wide open and he went somewhere else with the ball. Uh, and and I think he and he missed C.D. Lamb uh, on what would have been a touchdown. He missed him, yeah. But but other than that, even the, even the great catch was a bad right. Pass. Yeah. Oh, even when the, the ball was in was the air, I started moaning watching it because I could see it's like I oh. thought he was throwing it away. <laughs> I said, "You missed him. What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> and, 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 and it was like, and then I, that was the most fantastic catch. I, I don't think. I've seen a guy contort his body the way he did and twist himself back from catching the like he was going to catch the ball over his left shoulder to have to adjust and do a 180 and turn around to the right shoulder and falling backwards yet still have enough height to go up and get the ball and then he hung on and the and the hands and the hands to hang on as he hit the ground the only other catch I've seen like that is the OBJ catch yeah. against yes. us. It, which uh, was in, in today's the anniversary. State. Today's the what? anniversary oh, of that really? catch. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. it's uh, that's it, amazing. It, and so don't and get I on think that Twitter. makes that one more amazing because it was a deeper pass and of course harder to judge and Brandon Carr was all over him just like the D B was all over C D Lamb. So it, except you know what the distance, though you if have you go almost back, the same impact. Everson, you go back and look at that OBJ catch like I did today, and okay. you can make a case of a little offensive PI there on uh, on Beckham. Is you know Brandon Carr wound up on his backside, and you know it, I'm not saying it should have been called, but yeah. you could make the he they he kind of caught his arm, and that's why Carr went flailing on the play. He sure uh, did. Yeah. yeah. And um, so it was a fight. It was a fight. That's right. A, yeah, a it shouldn't have been called, but and OBJ yeah. won. Yeah, that's yeah, how that yeah. that's right. But but I, I'm with you uh, when Mickey was talking about uh, what CD did on this catch. Uh, Odell did the same kind of stuff on that catch to to make it. And and this one, I mean, 
you can just see what hands that CD has because, as you mentioned, Everson, I mean, he's hitting the ground at the same time. He has got to hold on to that football, and uh, the jarring uh, collision with the ground would be enough to separate a lot of people unless you got some really strong hands, which uh, CD obviously does. All right, and I mean, we got, we got other people with 88s that we've had on this squad, mm-hmm. but that catch right there reminded me of Dez more than anybody else. We've had some great 88s on this team, but that play with the physicality and just the, it's like Dennis Rodman going for a rebound. That's a 50-50 ball. I want this and it's mine. That to me, that just shows how good. You've always talked about him, Bill. CeeDee Lamb's the man. He is the man. Well, I've been watching him since he was a freshman at OU and, and back then everyone was talking about uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown, take nothing away from him, but I th- yeah. I said, you know, Brown came out and he was a first-round draft pick of the Ravens, and I was telling people, you wait, this C.D. Lamb is better than him. And, um, you know, and the other thing, and, you know, and, and he's had his moments this season already where there's been some rookie stuff, you know, or you know, drop pass and whatever. Uh, so he's going to have, and all receivers are going to have uh, moments like that. But this is a game that the Cowboys really needed to have. And he stepped up not only with that play, but in other ways, they, they were able to use him in the Not run return. game, the two-point conversion run, and the you know two ca- two uh, carries for twelve yards, and his physicality that he plays with. I texted a friend, uh, and I said, "Take nothing away from Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup, but I think CD's the best receiver on this team." I mean, I and that's every, at the lot, at Bill. the snap, that's saying a lot. At the snap, I'm looking to see where is Lamb lining up. And because I want to watch him, and Bill, on a on a side note on him, so that was his second catch in the game. Uh, that catch tied uh, Bob Hayes' single season record for a rookie Bullet in Bob Hayes at forty six, and then he went on and caught two more in the game and and broke the record ten games in. Remember, Bob was playing, I guess, fourteen games uh, at that point when he set the yes. record at forty six. Yep. Uh, but this kid in ten games has broken the record. Uh, he has 48 catches now. So just a little historical. Hey, man, so you know, guys, one, one 40, other thing 40, about 46 him. 46 passes as a rookie in Tom Landry's offense, <laughs> that's saying a lot as well. That's saying yeah. a lot about Bullet Bob Hayes, the fact that Tom Landry would throw it to a rookie that many times in an in a, a, a era of football that wasn't pass happy the way we are right now. That's probably yeah, why I wonder what his Meredith yards per catch were. <laughs> Him and Meredith probably didn't get along. <laughs> <laughs> one, other, one other note on uh, CD that I love about him so much is he is so tough. I mean, yes. he – he will take a, a hit and he'll it doesn't phase him and he will deliver hits. I mean, he is such a tough physical receiver. I mean, you mentioned Des Bryant and Des has that same those, some of those same qualities. But Michael Irvin, uh, the, another eighty-eight. Uh, you know, CD's got the same kind of toughness that Irvin had. And Bill, yep. did you see what he did when he scored on the two-point conversion? He stopped immediately in the end zone, threw the ball to the referee, <laughs> turned around, and went back to the bench. He, he's a lot mature than it's I It's time I to expected. go to work. Yeah, we got work to do here. It's time, time to go to work. That's right. No, no celebrations. We got more work to do. That's what I liked about the whole attitude. That was the attitude around the entire team, defensively and offensively. Nothing's going to be perfect, and they have to win every game like this now. You know, you, you can't just say, and we, you know, I've, I've said it earlier, the three facets of the game. We have to have all facets of this game. And that's the, that's the beauty of a good team. I, I love teams like that to where your special teams coach, he wants some of his glory. Your offensive coordinator wants glory. By the way, uh, 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 Keller Moore did a great job with some of the play calling yesterday. Absolutely. A two-point conversion. Yeah. Hell of a play. You know, I was a dis- little disappointed that Coach McCarthy decided to go for the field goal when we had that uh, fourth down, and I thought it was inches. Uh, I was disappointed in that, but otherwise, I thought the entire game plan was built towards winning, and when we did make mistakes, no one lamented on it. We came back out, and we played ball. That third quarter was horrible, 
And we said, forget the third quarter. We came out in the fourth quarter and reestablished ourselves to go and win this ball game. So it's the resolve of the team that is just as important as the game plan that you install. So let's hope that this resolve stays at where it is with this Cowboy team. And, you know, to to, uh, emphasize your point, Everson, they had to come from behind three times to be able to win this game. And and the irony of this whole thing is if you remember early in the year, and I can't remember which game it was, and they, they got accused of quitting, right? And then you got all the fans out there wanting them to quit because they want a better draft choice. And the doggone team, right. they wouldn't quit. They kept coming back and nope. coming back, and they didn't. On the road. On the road. On they the didn't road. let anything that went yes. wrong get them down in the dumps. There you go. And um, <clears throat> all right, you want to get into Dalton? You want to get into the run game? I'll just say this about um, – Kellen Moore also, and this yes. is this kind of gets us into the run game too. I love the play call to Zeke on the touchdown pass to start the game with the two tight ends out there leading the way, yep. uh, him into the end zone too. Yep, absolutely. And I didn't know that Zeke. Could, I didn't know Zeke had a, a, a little option quarterback in him. That was a nice, <laughs> little, nice little pitch. You know, he he, he throws him and boom, that's that pretty smooth, easy catch, easy score. I mean, earlier in the season. We have taken these golden opportunities and just turned them into crap, but not this game. And that's what you have to have, a feeling of optimism. Hey, here's another thing. Another thing down on the goal line uh, on the setting up the touchdown pass to Schultz. You remember the play before that? CD came in motion to the deep, you know, angling back behind the running backs in the in the backfield. And I believe it, Jonathan Vilma said on the broadcast he didn't understand why they took Lamb out of a play like that. And I don't even remember, remember the play myself right now. But what I did think of after that is, and Everson, you can tell me better, all right, the, the, uh, the reasons for putting a receiver in motion like that, you're able to, to see what the defense is doing and whether in man zone, whatever it might be. Yep. I'm wondering if that motion on that play set up in any way what went on on what turned out to be the touchdown pass to Schultz on the very next play. I'm not, I don't know. It was almost well, like they were all, setting they want, up. They want, first of all, they want to create the, the misdirection after the snap, I mean, if he's right. going to go in motion, then, of course, all eyes are going to go that way. But, and then they brought it back to the other side. So total misdirection. But they saw that the misdirection was going to work because the motion did create the pre-snap read. Oh, anytime you go in motion and you don't do anything with that wide receiver, he was just like what you call a, a, a catalyst to the rest of the play itself. He, he, he determined... Uh, who they were going to go to once they created that misdirection. And, and speaking of Schultz, this guy's been having a tough year. He's really been having a tough year. He hasn't been blocking well. You can kind of see the frustration even when he makes catches on plays. It, his, 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 his brain and his feet didn't seem to be going together all year long, and he's really put us in some tough situations. And I, I, was, been, I was very critical of him a couple of times on Twitter. But I must say, he came out of his shell yesterday. He played well, and I'm glad the Cowboys gave him an opportunity to make plays because he can be a great outlet for us when CD's not ready, when, when Coop and the guys may be getting double teamed, Gallup, you know, didn't have the best game. Dalton Schultz is a great option for us, not only a safe option, but extremely effective in certain parts of the field. But uh, I guess uh, it's a great point, Everson. As we go to break here, I guess my I'm wondering what I would like to find out is like on that previous play whether uh, whether Kellen Moore saw something that they were doing defensively that helped him know that the the touchdown play was going to work by putting Lamb in motion on the previous play. So it'd be interesting to to learn that. All right, we got much more to get to here on Mix Shots in just a moment. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of 
Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Oh. Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards. And that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizal for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. Back, back to mixed shots. Looking for something to change up your dinner routine? Help support local Frisco businesses by choosing one of over 30 restaurants at the Star District. For information on delivery, takeout, curbside pickup, and dine-in availability, visit thestardistrict.com. All right, final segment here of Mix Shots. So much to get to. We uh, started to touch on it a little bit on the defensive side of the ball mm-hmm. and uh, the linebackers as Everson had uh, his picks to click with the linebacking core with a special emphasis on Leighton Van Der Esch. Uh, that's what he said on Friday. My guy was Sean Lee. I said if, if they'll play him, he'll be the pick to click. Sure enough, in the first half of that game, Sean Lee comes into the game, and uh, let's see, he came in on the third series, and after an initial 27-yard pass to Justin Jefferson on the first play, it was three and out for the Vikings offense, and then they get the ball back, and and, uh, Sean Lee was in for Jalen on that series, and then uh, Van Der Esch was out the next series. Sean Lee was in, and there was a three and out. And that's all we got out of Sean Lee in the first half of that game. Can you explain? Sounds like he's trying to make a case. Sounds like he's trying to make a case for Sean Lee over my pick to click. No, 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 no. I'm just saying right, that. I was just checking. I no, was just no. checking. Van Der Esch obviously uh, deserves uh, uh, with with all he did in that game. Uh, but I would have liked to have seen more Sean Lee. Could you explain to me I why would like to we see don't more see hits more like he made on uh, on Delvin Cook? I love I love more hits like he made on Delvin Cook. Kind of readjusted that face mask a little bit. They had to right. change helmets for Delvin Cook on the goal line. That's right on the goal yeah. line. And once again, the the stubbornness that they uh, exhibited was amazing to me. Of course, they ended up still scoring, but you want to. I, I hate it when a running back just goes into the end zone untouched on the goal line. Mm-hmm. Delvin Cook was touched. <laughs> he was touched about uh-huh. three or four times, and he had to really work hard for it. And Sean Lee was one of those guys that was in there creating that resistance. Uh, I, I do like having all three linebackers in the ball game. And Spags, I want you to speak on this. They had a defensive end trying to cover a tight end. Man, this is killing me. I don't understand that part of the game plan to me. It, it, it bowed. It, it, it was more in the in the in the realm of, of things you do when you lose. You know, you, you, you should have you should have that you make when you lose. You should have been here. <laughs> it's like he he, <laughs> he he tried to cover the tight end the one play. I swear to God, it was either the next play or the next uh, two plays later. <laughs> they had him going out there trying to cover the running back. And I know these guys here got tired of me because I kept pointing out, right? And then when that play happened, all I kept going was, why? Why? (laughs) I I just, why can't you put a strong side linebacker out there? 
when we have the personnel. I don't get so it. So you guys are going to have to talk to you guys have to talk to Mike Nolan and ask him what is his pet peeve with three linebackers in the ball game, especially you have decent athletic linebackers. I, I get upset at them sometimes on the lack of the run run support, but when it comes to the pass, if you could just play a nice zone, I think you could be a little bit more effective with those three linebackers. Because we're doing pretty well up front at this point. Sometimes you get a little tedious, you know, wanting to get the guys in there. But they were putting enough pressure on Kirk Cousins to where he had to get rid of it quickly. Give me some good linebackers back there when it's time. Maybe Delvin Cook will stop slicing and dicing us a little bit. And then we could have a little bit more staunch run support. But for some reason, he loved having the big defensive end in there and setting the edge. And it wasn't working. Well, and uh, you saw in the Raiders-Chiefs game last night, the Witten touchdown, the Chiefs had a big old defensive end Garden Witten out there. And here's 39-year-old Jason Witten. Uh, who shaking him down. End. Jason and was then, shaking him down. Yeah, and, and the defensive end <laughs> couldn't keep up with him. <laughs> <laughs> Jason know? probably felt like, man, I feel like I'm 23 all over again. I'm shaking people down, <laughs> getting open in the end zone. Good to see him with that touchdown. But you see how futile the, the, the effort is to put a defensive end in such a compromising position. It's not fair to the defensive end himself. It's just really That's not. right. Can you imagine Witten if he was here in, in practice and they put Dorrance Armstrong on him, you know? <laughs> right. He can play another three years here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's sitting there. He'll play to 50 if he, you're going to do this. He would have stormed into the defensive meeting and gone, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and, and see, the thing, I, I, I like to move on to the Donovan Wilson uh, giving up the touchdown spaz because you talked about there that. There you go. Go for it. Go for it. I, I played safety with the Giants a little bit on third downs. And one thing I learned uh, by through Bill, Bill Belichick is, Giving a receiver free release down the field can be very dangerous to your secondary and especially to your deep safety. If you're a safety, no matter where you are, and Spags made the, made the point to say that Donovan Wilson lined up too close to the line of scrimmage to be covering, to, to be deep on that play. Well, no matter what happens on that play, you create your own isolated man-to-man -man situation as a safety. First of all, if someone doesn't get a hand on that receiver, because otherwise he's going to close that gap on that safety and you're, you're in no man's land. You can't turn your hips fast enough and you are at that receiver's mercy. So to me, there's a flaw both ways. You have to get a hand on that receiver. That's coming from the system itself. And as a, as a safety, you have to be prepared when you've got a dynamic receiver coming at you. I don't care if you're 10 yards deep. If he comes with a free release, he's going to close that gap on you, and it's just like being a cornerback. You have no help anywhere. I know that feeling. It doesn't bode well for you, and it didn't bode well for Donovan Wilson. He's going to get beat on that play because he has nowhere to look for help. I don't care if the guy runs a post, he's going to beat you. If the guy runs a post corner, he's going to beat you. And if I'm not mistaken, he ran the post corner. Donovan Wilson was isolated. And it was one of the negatives, one of the few negatives that Donovan Wilson had in that ball game. I thought uh, Justin Jefferson there for a second thought he was playing against Oklahoma in that bowl game last year. Yeah, that was pretty easy. <laughs> pretty easy <laughs> it play. Looked, it looked it's just as easy as that. Catch. But see, that was like I said, that was another case where they're in two wide receivers and a fullback and a tight end, and you played a five-man front, and you brought your other safety up into a linebacker spot. And, and, and once Anthony Brown gets beat off the line of scrimmage, then Wilson's got to – and I don't know if he saw Thielen cutting across the field and he lost sight of the other guy and he, and, and he didn't have his eyes in the right spot, but he's in the middle of the field. That's a long way to go either way if they're going to throw a deep pass. Uh, but again, if, 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 if you had another linebacker there, maybe you, you put your DB back and you got two deep safety instead of, instead of one. That was, that was the thing I, I, I didn't understand. But what I did understand was the and fact so that the Cowboys finally ran the football with some authority. And, and again, and, and it's like, well, why did it happen? Well, number one, 
The offensive line played better. Number two, they weren't down by 25 points in the game. They were in the ball game so they could stay uh, with the run. And I thought, I thought Mike McCarthy had an interesting comment last week. Someone asked him, I think it was on his radio interview, someone asked him, can you think back to calls you wish you had back? And his answer was, you know, you don't, uh, after a game, wish you had calls back because you planned all week for that situation to make that call. He goes, what I wish I had back was better execution on the play I called. And I, I said, okay, that's good, right? So then if you think about it, think about Pollard's, and I went back and looked at it a couple of times, Pollard's 42-yard touchdown run. So was it a great call? Or was it great execution? Because when you go back and look at it, uh, Dalton Schultz, who does have times uh, trouble holding down the edge, got his guy turned. Zach Martin pushed his guy five yards beyond the line of scrimmage, blocked him right out of the play. And then you had Noah Brown uh, at wide receiver on the right side come and got the safety, right? And to help, he sure did. And then to help matters out, <laughs> their cornerback, Jones, decided to Olay. He didn't want any part of making that tackle Yeah, he whatsoever. made that decision. He did this. <laughs> and it's like, are you kidding me? So, so, And everybody wants to say, see, Pollard needs to have more carries. Well, any one of us that had enough speed to get through that hole could have ran for a touchdown <laughs> because it was blocked perfectly. And it's amazing when you execute the play that's called, how how easily it works. Uh, and, and so, again, it's like, oh, well, he's got to have as many carries as Zeke. I, I, if people watch what Zeke does in a game, to me it's absolutely Ooh. amazing how he keeps getting four- and five-yard carries when he gets hit at the line of scrimmage. That guy's a warrior. Yes. He is a stud. He is a stud. And I got to say, guys, I, I – before we go, there has to be a, a, a change in the secondary coverage. I promise you, if you just make the change from being outside shoulder to inside shoulder, that could really put the defensive back safety or corner at more of an advantage because you won't be getting beat inside and these guys running all the way across the field creating these big plays. Trust me, guys, you got to be inside strong coverage. That's how Thurman Steves got all of their interceptions. We stayed inside and we dared them to try and throw it across the field. Okay, I've got it written down. I'm going to go down the hallway and give them a note right now. Please go tell them. Thank you, Spags. Just Uh, don't tell them I said it. Don't tell them I said it. Tell them, tell them Dion said it. Then they might listen to you. But Mickey will be giving it to them for the Ravens game, not for the game on Thursday, because he has to go through a week's worth of COVID testing before (laughs) he can go go on to the the other side of the field. (laughs) That's right. That's right. We'll look forward to it in two games from now. I want to see a change. There you go. All right, right, uh, we're back with more tomorrow. Washingtons, Washington football team. (laughs) Tomorrow at 1.30 here on Mix Shots. Make it a great victory Monday. Yes, sir. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about you?